to help me hear my voice when I cry to you. Let my prayer arise before you like incense, the raising of my hands like an evening oblation. Like burning incense, O Lord, let my prayer rise up to you. Set, O Lord, a guard over my mouth. Keep watch, O Lord, at the door of my lips. Do not turn my heart to things that are wrong to evil deeds with those who are sinners. Like burning incense, O Lord, let my prayer rise up to you. Never allow me to share in their feasting, 
If the upright strike or reprove me, it is kindness. But let the oil of the wicked not anoint my head. Let my prayer be ever against their malice. Like burning incense, O Lord, let my prayer rise up to you. To you, Lord God, my eyes are turned. In you I take refuge, spare my soul. From the trap they have laid for me, keep me safe. Keep me from the snares of those who do evil. Like burning incense, O oh Lord, let my prayer rise up to Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Like burning incense, O Lord, let my prayer rise up to you.
God will bring you salvation and joy. Be with me, Lord, when I am in trouble. Be with me, Lord, I A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Hear the word of the Lord, princes of Sodom. Listen to the instruction of our God, people of Gomorrah. Wash yourselves clean. Put away your misdeeds from before my eyes. Cease doing evil. Learn to do good. Make justice your aim, redress the wronged. Hear the orphan's plea, defend the widow. Come now, let us set things right, says the Lord. Though your sins may be like scarlet, they may become white as snow. Though they may be crimson red, that they may become white as wool. If you are willing and obey, you shall eat the good things of the land. But if you refuse and resist, the sword shall consume you, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Word of the Lord. This uh, first reading for today, uh, the one you just heard, or perhaps you heard it uh, at daily mass this morning, really struck me today. Uh, I love Isaiah, and I usually so much enjoy reading Isaiah. But this one kind of made me want to uh, avoid it, so I decided that's a good place to begin tonight. It's sitting deep in my heart, and I'm, I'm wrestling with it. I don't know about you, but when I was growing up, Sodom and Gomorrah was like kind of something, I just knew it was bad. And as I got a little older, it, it, it seemed to always be told in the uh, realm of a sexual morality tale. And that, like so many things, translated into a dichotomy, bad, good, or evil and good. And these stark, bright lines around the choices we make. But, you know, looking back, I'm thinking when I was learning it in that context, it was also a time when, when societal rules were changing. So, you know, I think that was probably the emphasis at the time. But I'm not here to reflect on that. That's another topic for another day. I think what hit me about the reading today is the ways in which we deceive ourselves or allow ourselves to be deceived about good and evil and our role in it and in God's creation. A few weeks back, we heard the Adam and Eve story, or one of them in Genesis, and it made me think of today, I thought of that today in these readings. You know, the tree of knowledge of, you know, we cannot eat the fruit, you eat the fruit, it's bad, you're, you're banished. So that's a very, again, the stark imagery of good and evil. And, and that's important, but I think sometimes we get stuck there. It, it becomes a, um, a moral fork in the road, and should we go this way or that way? Or think about, is there an angel over here and a, a little devil over here? But I think that the fork is not always where the spirit leads us. Because I think about the, the, the and I'm sort of envisioning it as a, as a forest in this place between the two roads. We are in that space a lot 
And the path uh, that we take there is kind of, can be a murky middle. You know, we ask ourselves what is good and what is evil. And certainly that was a question for the people of Sodom and Gomorrah. Some examples are very obvious, but I think God is also asking us to look at the less obvious, more easily ignored choices. So for example, I think we can ex say that murder is bad or stealing or uh, behaving in a lewd manner and, and so forth. Those are bad, poor choices. And we don't want to do them. We want to make good choices. Um, we tell that to our children, and we have to listen to that, that ourselves. So we tend to make some big decisions along those, those bright lines. But what about the in-between things? The other night, my spouse and I were watching Gomer Pyle on MeTV. Yes, that's, that's what old people do. And in, in this episode... Gomer and two of his marine buddies have a day off, but they only have very little money that they can pull between themselves. They have about $3, and they figure they could go out and have a hamburger and french fries each, which I thought was pretty good, three people, three hamburgers, three fries. But um, they could apparently go to the movies and then just go out and have a hamburger. So Gomer goes over to that old-fashioned invention, the payphone, and he calls up using a dime to see um, what time the movie would begin. He hangs up the phone after he, he hears the, the times. And at just that moment, and for those of you who remember payphones, they had a little like thing in the bottom where you, you might get the, your coin back. Or, well, at that moment that he hangs up, that little door shoots open and coins are pouring out of it like a lost old-fashioned... Las Vegas jackpot and all these nickels and dimes and quarters are just shooting out of the phone so they gather them all up at the, in the, from the floor of the phone booth and they count the money and it comes to $14 so the two guys, his two friends are like, whoa, where can we go? Now we can go here and there and let's do this or that and Gomer in his very Gomer pile way says, no, that money's not ours, we can't use it and, you know, of course, his friends are like, come on, we found it. And in the end, they go back to the phone company where even they are not sure why this is happening um, and that somebody's trying to return this money. But the idea is he knew it wasn't his. It a, seems a curious and kind of small choice. But that's the kind of example, I think, of the choices we make in our lives. That doesn't mean that if we're in the parking lot at the supermarket and we see a penny, we have to kind of go search out its rightful owner. But I'm just thinking about what are some of the less obvious choices that we make that help us to become better, well, that we be, we're more aligned with God and turning away from sin. One of the ones I struggle with personally, which I'm embarrassed to admit, is what I call my eco-lazy reflex. We might get some takeout food, and I have a recyclable container that requires some cleaning. Sometimes I look at it and think, oh, do I have to clean this? What if I toss it out? What difference would it make? What's the big deal? But yet, caring for creation is something that God asks us to do. It's very clear. So, in the end, my little struggle leads me to do the right thing and wash the container. But a lot of times I do fail at it because I'm in a rush or in a hurry. Some of you know I work at a parish in Glenville, Immaculate Conception. And not unlike any church in St. Edwards and everywhere else, we serve a lot of people in need. Being on a bus route on a, on a busy road, we get a lot of walk-in traffic. And there's a whole cast of characters that comes to visit and asking for money or food help or something. So one day, I was really tired. I leave work and get to the supermarket. I, I stopped in Glen, the one in Glenville to pick up some, some yogurt that I needed for a recipe that night. And as I'm standing there, 
somebody kind of rudely pushes me and grabs into the yogurts. And especially during this time of COVID, I was like, oh, who's, you know, kind of brushing up against me. And I stepped back and I felt kind of annoyed. And I realized that it was a very challenged and challenging person that I deal with a lot in that capacity of, of someone seeking help. Now, I could have done any number of things in that moment, said hello to the person, or asked them if they needed a ride. But no, I, I did not do that. I kind of like sort of was found myself slinking away and not getting the yogurt that I went in there for. Now, I'm not here to make this a mea maxima culpa out moment for myself, but I felt really badly about it afterwards. And it's a reminder that we're called to the same attention every day in these seemingly small choices that in so many ways are actually the big ones. All the small yeses or noes that add up to who we are. And that's where I think Isaiah is pointing us today. In another point in the reading, it says, Come now, let us set things right, says the Lord. Let's set things right, because God is always giving us another chance. How can we set things right? But this invitation is extended by God and asking us to, now, how will you make this choice when you face that again? But of course, that call is to be more like God, more generous, compassionate, making good choices in the smallest and quietest moments. And it's most important when we're unseen by others and watched by God alone. And that's where we are in Lent. We're in the desert. There's no trees to hide behind. There's, there's no place to disappear to. It's stark. It's open. It's kind of bright out there. And we are revealed completely before God. So this Lent, let's remind ourselves that we are indeed seen and that we're called to make good choices and change our ways. And know that the unseen small acts and choices are the foundation for the bigger things of life and faith. Isaiah says, if you are willing and obey, you shall eat the good things of the land. The good things of the land will be before us when we emerge from our Lenten pilgrimage through the desert. And that, the best point that we, the best choice that we would make is to keep going ever deeper with Christ so that we might get to that end of that journey. Good things always await us with God. May we always choose them.
My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord, and my spirit exalts in God my
touch, O Lord, with all those awake this night. Watch, O Lord, with all those who weep. Give your angels and saints charge over. your dying ones in your love O Lord of all Watch O Lord with all those awake this night Watch O Lord with all those who weep Give your suffering ones in your love Lord heal afflicted ones in your love Lord shield your joyous ones in your love O Lord of all watch O Watch, O Lord, with all those who weep. Give your angels and saints charge over all who sleep. Hold your grieving ones in your love, Lord. Raise your fallen ones in your love Lord mend your broken ones in your love O Lord of all watch O Lord with all those awake this night watch O Lord, with all those who weep, give your angels and saints charge over all who sleep. Guard your little ones in your love, Lord. Guide your searching us all your peace in your love, O Lord of all. Watch, O Lord, with all those awake this night. Watch, O Lord, with all those who Using the words our brother and savior taught us, we pray, 
our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Lord, as you lead us on this Lenten journey, help us to become repentant and ask for forgiveness and to help those in our parish family and in our wider family who seek the same. And help us to do something, something about what we see, something that turns the water of our words into the wine of will and risk, into the bread of blood and blisters, into the blessedness of deed, of a cross picked up, and a savior followed. To the end of his journey on earth, so that we may be present at the resurrection that you alone have given. Amen. And we ask God to bless all of us in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And we thank you for praying with us this evening, and we wish each and every one peace. <laughs>